The Abruzzo region in the east of Italy offers enchanting landscapes and plenty of variety. Between the Mediterranean Sea, hilly landscapes, mountains and lakes you will find many beautiful seaside resorts with dreamlike beaches, and wine-growing areas just behind the Adriatic coast. In addition, in Abruzzo you can expect numerous historic towns with enchanting charm, archaeological sites, sanctuaries, churches and castles. And of course the excellent Italian cuisine. The highlight of this Italian region is its spectacular landscapes and the greatest density of nature reserves in all of Italy. Behind the Abruzzo Adriatic coast, which is about 130 km long, is a strip of hilly land about 20 km wide. The interior is characterized by lakes, plateaus and mountains of the Apennines. Here you will also find the mountain massif Gran Sasso d'Italia, which reaches an altitude of almost 3,000 meters. If you like this video, please support our channel with a like, comment or subscription. Thank you. L'Aquila, in its protected position between the mountain massifs of Gran Sasso and Monte della Larga in Abruzzo, presents itself as an extremely varied vacation region. Secluded mountain villages, enchanting medieval towns, unspoiled nature and numerous sports opportunities open up to the guests of L'Aquila. The province of L'Aquila in Abruzzo is located in the National Park Parco Nazionale del Gran Sasso e Monte della Larga. The town of L'Aquila has existed since 1240, surrounded and protected by the high mountain ranges of the Gran Sasso and the Monte della Larga. The town has several monuments that bear witness to its long history of settlement, with its 16th-century Spanish fortress, the Church of Santa Maria di Collimaggio and the Basilica of St. Bernard. A popular meeting place is the 13th-century Fountain Fontana del 99 Canal. Its 99 tubes stand for the former 99 castles in the area. Since the severe earthquake in April 2009, these priceless buildings are being restored in loving detail. On the outskirts of L'Aquila, outside the earthquake center, new buildings have been erected whose facade design is in keeping with the historical models. The Abruzzo National Park, which has existed since 1923, is one of the oldest nature reserves in Europe. Among other things, 50 to 80 bears and numerous wolves still live in the national park. The almost extinct wolf population has increased so much through the protective measures in recent decades that the animals have now spread from here over the entire Apennines to the Southern Alps. In the national park there are also chamois, martins, wildcats, otters and numerous other animals, which, however, are rarely seen on the hikes. Numerous marked trails lead through the area, and the tourist infrastructure is well developed. The landscape, however, is not as exotic and exciting as on the Gran Sasso or the Maella. The peaks are lower, mostly around 2,000 to 2,200 meters, and less prominent, moreover, large parts of the area are forested. The extensive beach forests fascinate Italian nature lovers. Therefore, the area is more visited than the other Abruzzo mountains. About a million Italians travel here every year, and it can get crowded, especially in high summer. June and September are therefore the better hiking months. Atri is an enchanting artistic city on the Terramon coast with ancient, antique roots, 7 to 5 century BC. Atri was an important colony in the Roman Empire, suffered barbarian invasions and foreign domination in the Middle Ages, and flourished again under the control of the noble family of the Aquaviva from the 14th century. In the center of the small town, the charm of this long history is still strongly felt. 
monuments and historical palaces, churches, museums and fascinating corners of the old town are some of the pieces of the wonderful mosaic that Atri offers to its numerous visitors. In the cathedral square rises the Cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, dating back to 1285. Worth seeing the ornate design of the four portals dating back to the 13th century. The 19th century municipal theater is also excellently preserved. The theater, also called Bonbonniere because of its dimensions and its enviable acoustics, copies on the outside the theater of the Scala of Milan, while the inside seems to copy the theater of San Carlo of Naples, with its boxes and balconies on three floors. The village of Pacentro is located in the province of L'Aquila. The municipality has about 1,270 inhabitants and is located 690 meters above sea level. Pacentro is a mountain community with an idyllic location and first-class panoramic views on the slopes of the Montagna del Morone and the Parco Nazionale della Miela Nature Reserve. The village of Pacentro is one of the most beautiful medieval villages in Italy. The village was included in the list of the most beautiful Italian villages. Among the sites of Pacentro is the Catello Cantelmo Castle in the center of the village. Built in the 14th century, the castle is remarkable for its three square towers. Also worth seeing are the Santa Maria Maggiore or Misericordia Church, dating from the 14th-15th centuries. The village of Pacentro is also famous for the Sicchione family that originated there. A daughter of the Sicchione family has become a world star, more precisely Madonna Louise Veronica Sicchione better known as the top star Madonna. Chieti is the capital of the province of the same name in Abruzzo. Both the House of Anjou and the Crown of Aragon ruled over the city throughout history and have left their mark here. Today, the city consists of the old town of Chieti Alto, located on a hill, and the modern industrial site of Chieti Scolo in the valley. Accordingly, most of Chieti's historic buildings are found in the upper town. Chieti is the seat of the Archbishopric of Chieti Vosto. Among the most important sites of the city is also its San Justino Cathedral, built in the 13th century and equipped with a bell tower. Inside, the church surprises with subsequently created Baroque elements. But Chieti's National Museum of Archaeology is also widely known, among other things for the famous statue of the warrior of Cape Strano, more than two meters high. The limestone sculpture, dating back to the 6th century BC, was found in Cape Strano in the middle of the 20th century. It represents an armed Piscinian and once served as a burial object. The small town of Lanciano enjoys fame among pilgrims from all over the world due to a Eucharistic miracle that is said to have happened there more than 1,000 years ago. Moreover, it delights its visitors with a beautiful old town and many excursion possibilities in the mountains and by the sea. It is located only about 10 kilometers from the Adriatic coast and in its back rise the mountains of the Apennines in the Mayela National Park. Among the most important monuments in Lanciano are the Eucharistic miracle in the Church of San Francesco Santuario Miracolo e Eucaristico, the Cattedrale Basilica Madonna del Ponte and the remains of the Roman bridge Ponte di Diocleziano below. The Grot di Stiff are one of the most famous caste phenomena in central Italy. 
They have been used since the Bronze Age, with archaeologists also finding remains from the Neolithic period. The complex was built around an underground watercourse. In 1907, Marquis Alfonso Capelli had a hydroelectric power plant built here, some remains of which can still be seen at the entrance to the caves. The caves, over 1,000 meters long, are only partially explored and open to the public. They were created by an underground river through infiltration, erosion and corrosion that escapes to the surface, making them almost unique in Italy. The origin of the water is not yet completely clear. It is thought to come either from the mountains above the Rocche Plateau or from the Pozzo Caldio, a small lake near the town of Terrenera, which flows into two sinkholes or karstic funnels. The underground path of the watercourses has an approximate total length of about 3 kilometers between the plateau and the mouth, with the water overcoming a difference in altitude of over 600 meters. The Gran Sasso Massif is one of the most impressive mountains in Italy. The gigantic boulder of the Corno Grand, 2,912 meters, rises strikingly above the fascinating, almost 30 kilometers long plateau of Campo Imperatore. On the barren plateau, the shapes of the clearly structured landscape stand out clearly, rock faces, hollows, almost endless meadows determine the picture. From time to time you can meet a flock of sheep or some semi-wild horses. In June and July orchids, gentians, daffodils, violets and many other mountain flowers bloom. On the south side of Corno Grand you are on the Calderone Glacier, the southernmost glacier in Europe. The Monte della Laga, bordering to the north and hardly populated, are a hiking area for adventurers. Here you can hike for days without encountering a settlement or even a human being. On the edge of the mountain, at the large reservoir Lago di Campo Tosto, however, easier tours can also be undertaken. Vosto, in the province of Chieti in Abruzzo, has golden beaches and clear sea water. The town is also known for its monuments, such as Castello Calderesco and Palazzo de Volos. The foundation of Vosto dates back to the Illyrians. Later, the town on the Adriatic Sea was under Roman influence. The beaches near Vosto are mostly shallow sloping and therefore not only suitable for water sports enthusiasts, but also for families with children. Among the latter, the Aqualand del Vosto water park is also very popular. It offers water slides, opportunities for fun and games in and around the water, and a colorful show program. Among the sites of Vosto are the Cattedrale di San Giuseppe and the Palazzo de Volos, located in the immediate vicinity. It is now used as an archaeological museum and for art exhibitions. The Castello Calderesco, just a few hundred meters from the Palazzo, was built at the beginning of the 15th century by the military commander Caldora. Pescara is a vacation resort on the Italian Adriatic coast in the middle of Abruzzo, which can be visited all year round. In summer, especially the sandy beaches, some of which are over 20 kilometers long, attract numerous vacationers to Pescara. Romantic bays, shallow shores and a unique water quality make the region an ideal vacation destination for the whole family. In the cold season, on the other hand, the town is also a winter health resort, inviting visitors to enjoy extensive wellness stays and curative treatments. Culture has a high value in Pescara in every respect, be it the Pescara Jazz Festival, which has been held annually in July since 1969, or the changing art exhibitions of international importance in the Museo d'Arte Moderne Vittoria Colonna. In addition, during the summer months there are free concerts in various places in the city. If you want to combine bathing pleasures, culture and culinary delights on vacation, this is the right place for you.
the mountain village of Scano should be a mandatory stop on your trip to Abruzzo. Nestled in the mountain landscape of the Monte Marzacani, the authentic village lies above the heart-shaped Lake Lago di Scano and is one of the most beautiful villages in Italy. Scano is a small Italian village out of a picture book. The authentic mountain village sits at just under 1,000 meters above sea level and is mostly nestled in the Abruzzo National Park. The road through the Sagittario Gorge alone, which leads to Scano, is a truly extraordinary experience. Quite incidentally, Scano is one of the most photographed and photogenic villages in Italy. That is why it is also called the Village of Photographers. Great artists, from Cartier-Bresson to Berengo Garden, have immortalized the panorama, the small and winding streets, the roofs and women with their typical costumes of this village between lake and mountains. And even M.C. Escher, one of the most famous graphic artists of the 20th century, on his journey through Abruzzo, has made an artistic monument to Scano. Castello di Rocca Scolegna is a medieval castle in Rocca Scolegna, province of Chieti. The castle was principally constructed in the 15th and 16th centuries, at a time of military rivalry between the Angevin and Aragonese armies. A steep flight of steps leads from the plain of San Pietro to the entrance where there are the remains of the drawbridge. On the right there is a tower called Tower of Sentinel. The courtyard leads to other towers, the prison tower and the Angevin tower and the chapel with a gutter to collect rainwater that flows into a tank. A further ramp leads to the watchtower built with both stone masonry and brick with openings on all four sides. The walls of the castle surround the overhanging rocky mountainous site of the castle. The castle was featured as a principal location in the film Tale of Tales. Hiking through centuries-old beech forests, barren peaks, mystical gorges, flowering meadows, caves, grottos or past archaic stone huts and hidden hermitages, this nature reserve in Italy is hard to beat for beauty and diversity. The Mayella National Park includes a total of 39 municipalities in Abruzzo in the provinces of L'Aquila, Chieti, and Pescara. Miela National Park is characterized by the high mountains of its territory, in fact more than half of the park is located at altitudes above 2,000 meters. In between are forests, vast pastures and wild valleys. At 2,793 meters above sea level, Monte Amaro is the highest peak in the Miela. The Miela National Park is home to brown bears, wolves, deer and chamois. But the Mayela Mountains are not only a refuge and retreat for wild animals. A large part of the nearly 100 hermitages hidden in Abruzzo can be found in the Mayela National Park. For hermits the Mother Mountain was a place of contemplation and prayer. They lived secluded in solitude and poverty a simple life in harmony with nature, characterized by the search for God. Trabocco is the name of the characteristic pile dwellings that give its name to the Costa dei Trabocchi, the coastal stretch of Abruzzo between Ortona and Vosto. Originally used for fishing, today they have been transformed mainly into restaurants. Eating on a Trabocco is a unique experience that you should do at least once in your life. Because the Trabocchi of Abruzzo are much more than a photo motif or a landmark that give a special look to the coast, they are a landmark of the diverse culture of the region and quite unique and authentic fish restaurants that can give you an unforgettable culinary experience. At first glance, the fishermen's shacks look quite unstable on their thin wooden stilts, but it is precisely this flexible construction that makes them withstand the storm and waves. Rigid and robust structures are often powerless against the mighty force of the sea and the tides, and lose their resistance over time. Trabocchi, on the other hand, make use of the principle of yielding and elasticity. Instead of resisting them, the Trabocchi yield to the forces acting on the structure in the form of wind and waves. 
This particular pile design means that the structure offers little surface area for the elements to attack, and remains mobile. Selmona in the province of L'Aquila is a beautiful small town, nestled in the mountains of Abruzzo and a real insider tip in Italy. Selmona is mainly known as the birthplace of the ancient poet Ovid. However, it is also known in part for its colorful confetti, almond confectionery, and red garlic. But there is more to see, to discover, and to taste. Selmona is located in the middle of the Pelagna Valley, Valley Pelagna, in the center of Abruzzo and is called both the Siena of Abruzzo and the most beautiful city of Abruzzo. With just under 24,000 inhabitants, the city surprises its visitors with a mix of medieval, baroque and modern history. Selmona experienced its economic heyday during the Renaissance. This is evidenced not only by the magnificent facades and buildings in the historic city center, but also by the urban self-confidence of the Salmontini. Yet the origins of the small town go back much further. The ancient poet Ovid, who was born here in 43 BC, associates it with the destruction of Troy. According to Titus Livius, Hannibal also passed by Salmona on his way to Rome, 